Welcome to the Student Hub Live. We're in a different room, you'll notice, um, as we elevate the discussion from our orientation uh, event for the School of Education, Childhood, Youth and Sport. Now, we've spoken a lot today about the extent to which various disciplines have different lenses, so it should come as no surprise that we have a lot of disagreement. And to discuss something here today, uh, we have uh, six academics from the Open University, and our topic is the purpose of a university is to provide knowledge. Now, I'll be chairing this discussion, um, and as I said, we have six... Sorry. Karen, it's a quiz, isn't it? We always have a quiz during we, this time. Yeah, we, we were expecting quiz. a quiz. Yeah, no, it's like a, a debate. university challenge quiz. No, 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 no. We're having a debate, you see, yeah. today. But a debate is, is a quiz, but just with one question. Oh, okay. So, But well done on the quiz hats, actually. I hadn't noticed that in all the... Uh, and Simon, nice I question. see your team have some lovely scarves and decorations. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's good. Simon, might I ask you to introduce uh, yourself and your team? First of all, our team name, if yes. I may, Alma Mata means a nourishing mother. It's a Latin expression for universities. It gives that idea of what a university is really about. And as for the team? Okay, um, my name is Regine Hampel. I'm professor of online and distance language learning in the Faculty of Wellbeing, uh, Education and Language Studies. And I'm also the Associate Dean Research in that faculty. Hi, I'm Frank Monahan. I'm a lecturer in Applied Linguistics and a staff tutor, so that means I look after the tutors in the university and the timetabling and scheduling for your classes. And I'm Simon Lee. I'm a law professor and director of research into citizenship and governance here at the Open University. Uh, if it were a quiz, I, I should add that uh, it's the 35th birthday today of our first two children, a boy and a girl, twins, who were both on University Challenge. Oh. In well, their student days, a long time ago. <laughs> Just as well for you, it's not Absolutely. a formidable team. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I just wanted to introduce our name, we're the Unseen Academicals, and um, basically I think that any question that you answer, if your first reaction either is uh, 42, uh, it <laughs> is anything to do with Pratchett or uh, similar authors, Neil Gaiman, then you really have hit the high spot. But also, um, I think days like today are really great because quite often academics at the OU are quite unseen and we wanted to just spend the day with our students. Perfect. And who have you got joining you? I've got, um, I'm Jane, I'm Jane Cullen, um, I'm a programme lead for taught postgraduate studies and so that means I do a lot of education. And I'm John Oates, I'm a senior lecturer in developmental psychology in the Faculty of Wellbeing, Education and Language Studies. And um, I chaired the production of the module E219. I'm currently chairing ED841, Master's module. Brilliant, thank you. And I'm Tyrell Golding. Um, my day job is Associate Head of School with responsibility for programmes, which basically means I oversee all the curriculum in our school, uh, but I also like to wear silly hats. <laughs> <laughs> and don't we all? Oh, can I just introduce our oh, yes. team? So, um, we were invited to bring a team mascot and I really wanted to bring my dog who is a spaniel called Daniel and I know many of our students have um, study buddies of either the canine or feline or other variety. So oh, he couldn't come because he doesn't behave very well and he's even worse at quizzes than I am. Uh, <laughs> but he did lend us Mr Fox, his dear, dear friend who unfortunately does have an injury. Not that we're going for an early sympathy vote, but you know. Uh, so he's there to oversee. Um, <laughs> oh, good heckle for him as well. I'd say. So yes, um, he's here to help us. Well, okay, excellent. It's not a quiz, though, Tara. <laughs> okay, so before we discuss our debate, um, we are going to explain the rules. So at home, um, this is something that anybody will be able to, to, to speak to. So what do you think? Do you think that the purpose of a university is to provide knowledge or not? Now, I'm going to ask our teams to set out their parameters um, and to explain the stance that they're going to take for each of these discussions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to invite the first speaker to go first, um, and then we will be uh, taking a uh, starts from the other team and so on and so forth. Then we're going to have a few minutes where we consolidate what we've thought about and learnt and heard and that's your chance at home to again express your views on what you've heard from our speakers today as well as your own opinions. Then we're going to have a final minute summing up and then we'll decide on which team has presented the best argument and also which team you agree with. So that's what's going to happen. So first we need to decide who's going first. So I'm going to toss a coin. Heads, heads, tails. <laughs> <laughs> you snooze, you lose. Right, heads it is. Brilliant. Okay, so the first team, I've, I've got my gavel here, Simon, which you <laughs> probably would disagree with, but anyway, it's, it's all we've had time for today. Uh, so, you have up to six minutes to set your stance and make your first uh, series of points, Tyrrell. Thank you. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the gavel if you go over time and... Uh, 
then the next team can, can have a turn. Have a go. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, thank you and welcome students. This team is going to propose the motion that the purpose of a university is to provide knowledge. Um, and one of the ways that uh, I thought we would introduce this topic is really modelling uh, that kind of approach. So what I want to do is to talk initially about the, the process that we've undertaken to think about that question uh, or that motion and to start to talk about how we've identified an argument, how the different members of the team have decided on the different kind of topics or focuses they're going to take um, and then develop our argument for you. Uh, so first of all, we'd like to thank colleagues for the opportunity to discuss this important topic. Um, we looked at, at the, the statement, and I think the statement might seem in some ways quite a simple statement, quite innocuous. Uh, if you were asked to, to start to think about it as a student, you might sort of think initially, yes, I agree, or no, I disagree. But actually, uh, you might sort of wonder about where you might go with an argument uh, in terms of next steps. Um, so what we're going to do in this debate is we're going to de define um, the key terms as we see them and describe and critique or one of the ways it's talked about is to problematise what might be a simple sort of sentence. So each member of this team has approached this statement in, in maybe different ways, although there is some crossover. And we really hope that this will allow you to um, see a range of different perspectives on, again, what is quite potentially quite a simple topic, as well as um, how we rebuff mm -hmm. or um, challenge colleagues on the other uh, team and, and their perspectives as they've given it but also how to model how you might start developing an argument. Um, and we think that despite this being quite a simple sentence, there's quite a lot that we can develop in terms of understanding and um, uh, in terms of defence of the claim. So the first way that we approach the motion is to identify what we see as the key terms. And in this opening section, I'm going to explore the ideas of the word provide and what that means and start to look at the word university and what that might means. And I know Simon's explained in terms of alma mater some of their take on that. Um, in his speech, John will be discussing the idea around all the terms purpose and knowledge um, and what he thinks those terms mean and, and drawing on a range of perspectives on that. And Jane's also going to be exploring knowledge but from a very different perspective to John's. So what does provide mean? Does it literally mean presenting everything a student needs to know for their course and then expecting you as students or students at any university to represent this in their own words? We don't think so. We believe that it's about creating the space for students to come together with teachers, academics, researchers, and some of those people may all be the same. Uh, whatever the right terms for those individuals, but it's about bringing people together to learn. So it's about providing those learning spaces. We believe that a university has a key role in creating these spaces for students to develop their knowledge and understanding of a subject critically alongside their peers. For us, a university is a vibrant community of different people coming together to explore, discuss and contribute the big ideas a subject has to offer. Jane's going to be discussing this in greater detail uh, in her speech. I'm going to sound really old in this next paragraph and I, I realise this. And I was coming, I started to do words like this. So in the, this more modern age, the use of videos to teach ourselves a new skill via YouTube or other flat platforms is quite often everyday practice. As I say, I know that I feel pretty old uh, at times and perhaps a little bit old school, but I've, my house is full of things like how-to books on cookery or DIY. Um, alongside, obviously, my OU readers, I've been an OU student and I'm currently studying with the OU. But those books and those kind of informal or non-formal learning activities are key and important bits of learning, but they're not university learning. So what is it about learning at a university um, that is different? So there's many things that I really do turn to YouTube to teach myself. I taught myself learning to um, put up shelves, although um, one particular YouTube video told us to put the shelves up uh, using uh, drilling into the... Um, what's the bit between the bricks, mortar, rather than into the bricks, which is clearly not a good idea. So there's something around um, that knowledge being valid knowledge, and it's great to share, but you've got to be really sure of your sources uh, in, before you take those ideas uh, away with you. Um, and maybe it's something that I need to challenge myself on, but sometimes I feel a book has some more credibility than, than some videos on some um, some sites. But clearly Mary Berry's cookbooks aren't considered a university either. So given that the OU teaches online, we use videos, 
you might see a reader um, on some of your courses, but we draw on a range of these, these media to teach you what makes the OU a university. Well, two obvious things strike me. Firstly, after watching a video or reading some text or attending a lecture, the university checks your understanding. This might be formally or informally. For example, you might complete a TMA, which is a tutor marked assignment, an EMA, an end of module assignment. You might have some uh, group discussion uh, and, and, and share your um, understanding with your peers. Um, so there's that informal or informal understanding checking. And secondly, um, it's an institution with authority to teach you uh, in which you can trust the academic rigor of the materials that um, you are exploring. And John's going to discuss that further in a moment. So finally, we believe that a university is a high-level educational institution in which students study for degrees and academic research is done. And <coughs> Well, she is me. <laughs> Sorry, but time's time. I was going to say, it's just like TMA word count. You've got to stick to the time. Over the limit. Excellent. Well done. You've covered a lot in there, Tyrell. Simon. Where did Hillary meet Bill? <laughs> uh, why did Michelle get to m mentor Barack? Where did Theresa May meet Philip? Where did Prince William meet Kate? Where do you think I met my wife? And most importantly, if you've watched uh, Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, where did Donna, Tanya and Rosie meet? The answer in all these cases is at university. University is about meeting people, about being open to people. And when the Open University started in 1969, that was the very first thing the first Chancellor said. A university must be open to people, to places, to methods and ideas. So that's given us the structure of my first four points. Open to people. Uh, a guy who wrote about universities in the 1940s said, Bruce Truscott said, that in Cambridge they used to forbid men to use the library in the morning and women to use it in the afternoon, so that there wasn't any romance happening. But he said, but where better to have romance than in a library and in a university? And having met my wife in the law library at Oxford, uh, I, I agree. <laughs> so, well said. The second thing is you must be open to places. If I name some places uh, in the UK, uh, Oxford, Cambridge, Milton Keynes, Loughborough, Keele, Bangor in Wales, Stirling in Scotland, Coleraine in Northern Ireland, you probably don't know anything about those places other than that they've got great universities there. The university dominates the town in so many places, dominates the landscape. Each of these places is identified with universities creating beauty. Thirdly, open to methods. What's the biggest free live spectator sport in the world? It's the boat race. It's been going for 200 years between Oxford and Cambridge. It was started by students. It's run by students. Social media. Where was Facebook invented? At Harvard. Where was Instagram invented? At Stanford where Krieger and Seistrom met each other and this morning they've announced they're stepping down from their company. Going back to that open to people point as well as being open to methods. Students run societies in universities all over the world. In my own subject of law, it's mooting, a bit like this kind of debate. I used to ask students, I was a law professor at Queen's University in Belfast during the Troubles. I used to ask law students, write a sequel, a mini sequel, to the great book by Harper Lee, no relation to me, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. And they did that, and they got to think that being a judge is like writing a sequel to somebody else's chapter of the common law. But they also got to learn some lessons about that novel, about seeing the world from different perspectives. And then 25 years later, it emerged that she'd written a sequel herself, Go Set a Watchman. So that's what being a pioneer in methods is about. And the OU, of course, is the greatest of these. And finally, on these four points, open to people, places, methods, ideas, being open to ideas. That first chancellor said, the Open University started in the same week as human beings first set foot on the moon. And therefore, if you can't be open to the idea of doing something ambitious, if you just confine yourself to existing knowledge, you'll never get the fire, the passion, he said, within you to make a difference. So, my last two points are, what happens at other universities at the beginning and the end of your studies? I, I've been a vice chancellor, so I, I've I've had that experience in different kinds of universities of giving a talk to students on their first day and then giving them a certificate on their last day. On the first day, 
thing I like to say is that uh, the same guy, Bruce Truscott, writing about universities, he said there's two kinds of matriculation oath or promise you make on your first day. In Edinburgh, you have to say, I promise to study diligently, to do my best, and to serve my university for the rest of my days. In Glasgow, you have to say, I promise to make good any damage I cause to the furnishings <laughs> of the university. And to repay my debt if I do. I like that last bit. It's assuming that they're saying what they're going to do and they're not going to do it. So there are very, very pious ideals that we have. And then there are very practical things that we have. And the basic thing is to understand from day one, which is what this is about, that a university does not end on the day you get your certificate. It's a nourishing mother. It carries on in life. And that's why we refer back all the time to our alma mater, our nourishing mother. And so what I say at graduations to people is, you graduate with more than a certificate. You don't always know at the time it's happened what aspect of university life is going to affect you the most. It might be meeting that person in the library. It might be that different kind of method. And one of the things which the greatest American judge ever, Oliver Wendell Holmes, said, this is back to my subject, is about boat races. He was a war hero as well as a great judge, but he said he learned a lot from rowing at university. He said everybody who's rowing in a boat race is trying to give it everything. And if you're going to do that in a boat race, which is essentially ridiculous, why wouldn't you do it in life? And that's what university teaches you. Excellent, Simon. <coughs> Perfect. Spot on the timing as well. So two very, very good arguments being set up here and quite different arguments. So Tyrrell, you've, you've looked at the sentence from very different viewpoints, you've problematised it and you've started focusing on two of the aspects, the provide and the university and you've said that John's going to focus on purpose and knowledge and Jane's going to focus on another aspect of knowledge. Um, let's just take a quick uh, trip to see uh, how everyone at home is doing as well. So HJ's on the hot desk um, downstairs in the studio chatting away to everybody at home but let us know which team you think has presented the best argument. Now you'll need to do that on the chat. So is there a point that Tyrrell's made that you particularly agree with? Has what Simon said resonated with you at home? Um, so let us know your thoughts and opinions and also which team you think has presented the best argument and which team you agree with. And we'll come back and see how you're getting on with that but do keep those comments coming through to us. Right, Tyrrell, who from your team is going next? John will be going next, thank you. Uh, thanks, Tyrrell. <laughs> oh, John, I wondered Sorry. why you weren't wearing a hat, and I thought you were being a spoil sport. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's uh, right. Um, I was thinking we might play a game of Simon Says, so... <laughs> <laughs> Simon no, says, we're not doing hands. a quiz, or Simon. <laughs> <laughs> but really, look, everything that Simon has said is actually about knowledge, apart from one thing, which is dating. Um, <laughs> we've got Tinder, we've got apps for dating, and yes, you don't need a university to find a partner. In fact, isn't it a bit sad if you have to go to a university to find a partner? Aren't we able to do that across all walks of life? Knowledge, purpose, that's what we're talking about. Purpose of a university is about knowledge, basically. Purpose is a difficult word. It, it, it's something about direction, direction of travel. And as students at the Open University, you'll be so familiar with learning outcomes because we have to define those very clearly in relation to our materials. Well, outcomes, they're actually at the end of a process. And purpose is all about a sort of whole process that leads towards some, some outcomes or aims, if you like. And we talk about objectives along the way, certain things that we need to achieve along the route to achieve the purpose and the objective. And many things need to happen in providing knowledge. Many things need to happen in terms of process. Now, a lot of those are social. As a psychologist, it's very clear to me that knowledge gaining and knowledge generation is at root a social process. Knowledge without a social context is largely meaningless. So we need to think about purpose, including quite a large number of different um, processes along the way, some of which will indeed be social. Now, knowledge, knowledge itself is a, is a challenging term because there's all sorts of things we might know, certain things that we might need to know, that we want to know. Um, how do we compare something like knowing how to live a good life? What sort of knowledge is that compared to knowing the capital of, of Kyrgyzstan? Uh, ref my um, hat that I was given in Kyrgyzstan. Um, 
most important in all forms of knowledge is its evidential base, um, knowing that it's trustworthy. In a, in a time of fake news, we know that we have to have an understanding that our source is trustworthy and that the knowledge that we've gained through interacting with that source or taking from it is something we can trust, that it's valid. Now, a real aim along the way, um, a real objective along the way of gaining knowledge and providing knowledge is to give students and help students to acquire critical skills. So this is a really important part of the whole knowledge game. So let's leave that, that aspect of the whole process of knowledge gaining. I'll come back to generation because it's important. But also, who decides on the purpose? It's all very well for us to pontificate, and Simon says, and I say, but actually there are stakeholders in this. Um, universities need to be set up. They need to be funded. They need to be run. They need to, to publicise themselves, etc. There are multiple stakeholders. A lot of government... Uh, policy makers now um, consider the purpose of university is to produce employable individuals. How does that sit with knowledge? It doesn't sit well. So there is a question of who defines it. Has the shift from funding, from grants to loans, from students made a difference? Students as customers, does that define the purpose of university in a different way? Well, basically, no. I think that universities are about knowledge. Crucially, about knowledge generation, again, Simon referred to research as if it was something separate from providing knowledge. No, academic life is all about generating and sharing and helping others to um, share in that knowledge. So we're not just journalists. We don't just pick up knowledge and provide it. No, we generate it and we help students to generate it in their own work. So it's co-constructed. People have said a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Well, a lot of knowledge is a very valuable thing. Done. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Out of time. Yeah, very good. Amazing. Okay, so largely focusing on the purpose. Who decides this purpose? Um, and you've raised lots of interesting points there that are very topical right now. At home, people are talking about various things like books, etc. Um, and also let us know uh, which argument you agree with and also which team you think is presenting the better argument. Okay, so two thirds through, let's see your next speaker, Simon. Well, after I try to set a border scene and explain that it's much more than what they're saying, <laughs> much more than about knowledge, we're going to play the game on your terms now. Okay. And we've got two of the world's experts on <laughs> language, linguistics, education, the meaning of the motion, and what is knowledge first. Okay, well, as a linguist, I'm really interested in the fact that what the um, other team have done is try to bluff you by <laughs> taking over what the real thing is. But we're going to look at the actual words which are on the actual motion that we're discussing, <laughs> not what they want them to mean, <laughs> what they do mean. Mm. So let's start then with some of those. And Regina is going to take two of them, and I'm going to, I'm going to take the, the other two. So the idea of purpose, well... The purpose is actually a very clear thing. It is about actually having uh, something that is made or done specifically for a particular thing, and it has an intention and a performance behind it. That's what purpose really means. To go beyond that is to simply stretch it and to move over onto our side. You're very welcome, but you're <laughs> over there. And then the university is the other word I want to come to. So if we look back in, the, in time, the origins of that word come from uh, the Latin word universus, which means whole, or in later Latin, in the sort of Middle Ages, universitas, which is then a community. And so this is exactly what Simon's talking about when we talk about a community. It's not a building, it's not a set of structures. As Tyrrell rightly says, the Open University blows that out of the water. But it is actually about the, the whole of a community. But a community isn't just founded around a simple thing. And initially universities were there to have, uh, to have, to, to have seminaries and to, to have the priests and to have the leaders of society and so on, which Oxford and Cambridge still largely do when you look at the cabinet. But that's not all they do. There's no such thing now as a university. What we have now is multiversities. We have them doing lots of different things. So the, the old idea of the old college uh, universities like Oxford and Cambridge that's gone. We now they're there, but we now also have the sort of red brick universities, which then people go to, and they then did things like engineering, practical things like that. They were set up to do in the nineteenth century, and now we have even more universities that are 
don't uh, are focused on more vocational education. So these things blew out of the water the idea of a purpose at all. There are many, many purposes. So there isn't the purpose, singularity. There are lots of purposes to a university. So that's the sort of pro side of it. And I'll leave Regina to talk to you about knowledge and, uh, and, and the rest of it. I want to now think about the passion side of this that Simon's touched on. And um, th this side of arguing essentially, in a way, that the, the, that uh, universities are no more than what Robert Kerr, uh, who was the uh, chancellor in, in um, Chicago, said that universities was a series of faculties and departments joined together by a central heating system. <laughs> and it's that kind of thing that we have to think about, about. It's not just about the buildings, it's about the people. And a much greater thinker on these things was John Henry Newman uh, in the 1850s, uh, himself a founder of a university uh, still going in Birmingham. And he made it uh, a very strong case in, in, in the idea of a university in which he argues that it's actually about the habit of a mind. Now, one of the advantages of reaching my ripe old age of 62 is that I finished university 40 years ago. <laughs> so I'm quite aware of the fact that university, to me, is still ongoing in that experience, because I began with a German degree, and then I went to live in Germany. And having done that, I then, of course, became interested in German wine. I met my partner there. We then split up. I came back to England. And it's led me to all sorts of places. In Germany, I met Americans. I then moved, uh, have these friends that I go to and stay on their beautiful house on the Jersey Shore. These are enrichments of my life that go beyond the things that I learned there. That's really important. So we, we need to say that the, it's not something which happens during that undergraduate years. And, and another more recent person who's written about this is Stefan Collini. And he makes a really important distinction uh, that John has also made, coming over to our side, thank you, John, <laughs> is that, it's, uh, that it's education, uh, higher education, is not about training. They're two very distinct things. And so what makes the distinction is the fact that, we, that, that what we try to do is to call it into question the whole time. Knowledge is always questionable. So what we're not trying to do is to find knowledge. We're trying to find out what we don't know. It's the unknown. And this is, has very interesting effects in things like medicine. Some research, for example, is serendipitous, is where we had uh, recently, this year, in fact, researchers working on yeast, yeast of all things, discovered uh, connections to uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So it's this aspect that we need to be thinking about. And finally, final point, John Maynard Keynes, when he was asked, what is the purpose of economics, replied, well, it's not the creation of wealth, it is about learning how to live wisely, agreeably and well. And that is the purpose of university. Bye. Well Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Finishing there on what we don't know is being very important in, in terms of uh, a contrast to what we do know. So we have time for Jane, the final speaker. Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. So um, I think we're borrowing arguments from, from each other, so here goes. <laughs> uh, knowledge shouldn't be confused with facts. I think in today's climate, as John was saying before, the word fact has become a really tricky and sometimes dangerous term. Fake news, for example, as John was saying. The OU works with the BBC on that weekly Radio 4 programme, more or less, where claims to facts are checked out. And it's a programme worth checking out because it examines the evidence for claims about facts. But even that evidence-based fact-checking isn't the same as knowledge. Knowledge is about the self. It's about recognition, it's about realisation, and it's about understanding. I'm lucky enough to be part of the OU graduations e each year in Ely, and the OU graduates there talk about how they've changed, and you can almost see how they've changed. Knowledge is rich and knowledge is wise. It's an altered state. Knowledge is about the self, and university education is about changing the self. It's an oldie now, but that film, Educating Rita, is still worth a watch. It's about an OU student going through that sometimes difficult change, but profound change. My next point is that for every student, it's through this process of dealing with knowledge that everything else flows. The development of reflectiveness, reflection, for example, that sense of looking inwards with purpose is something which is included in all OU courses. It's part of the process of gaining knowledge. From knowledge comes learning, and from learning comes those qualities that we see in UOU students, such as self-belief, such as confidence, such as personal growth, understanding of others, meaningful interaction, participation, citizenship, leadership, 
we all, as past or present students, have developed. We have found a voice, and our voice surely is listened to on the basis of what we know. University education is also about grappling with the big ideas, and that kind of creativity comes from knowledge. We can know new things, create new knowledge, or it may be new to us, it may even be new to everyone. But it is only from the basis of knowledge that we can even begin to ask the big questions, the questions like how to live a good life, is there anything out there, and what's it all about? And my last point, and we hijack back from Frank, uh, it's important for many and most students who attend the OU to link university education to the world of work. We all know about the importance of the OU's employability service and the career development agenda. And for many of you students, you come to the OU explicitly to move forward in your career. If the purpose of university is other than to provide knowledge, the danger is of seeing university education as training, as skills development, as a box to be ticked. And all the kinds of limiting words and terms that push learning and knowledge into a narrow and defined space. University needs to be about much more than this. University is about knowledge and, and knowledge is about knowing and knowledge is about understanding and all of the emotions that come with it, enthusiasm and enjoyment. Perfect. Thank you, Jane. Excellent. You're making lots of notes on all of this so that I can sum up these arguments later. There's a lot going on between the groups. Um, so uh, do let us know at home again which side of the argument you think is presenting a more convincing case. We have our last speaker from your team, Simon. Thank you. Um, I agree with a lot of what Jane has just been saying about knowledge, but can I actually be nitpicking a little and put the knowledge back into the motion um, <laughs> that we are discussing? So uh, it's the purpose of higher education is to provide knowledge. When I first saw the theme of the discussion, um, I s did start to wonder, and I actually thought, well, is this really all we do um, for our students, providing knowledge to them? Um, I went to check a dictionary um, for the use of the word uh, provide, and it gave me the example of providing a much appreciated service. So is knowledge like a service? I would argue that no, it isn't. Knowledge cannot be provided in that sense even though I think the government at the moment increasingly seems to want universities to do exactly that, provide knowledge. Instead, I actually propose that we look towards um, somebody called Wilhelm von Humboldt uh, and his ideas. He's a German, uh, or he was a German philosopher, linguist and diplomat, um, and he suggested 200 years ago that we that a university is actually to do with the community of scholars and students engaged in a common search for truth. And I think that's really important. So a community of scholars and students engaged in a com common search for truth. Thus, um, for me and for my team, universities should be about helping to support the advancement of knowledge. Mm. And I'm not just talking about the kind of advances that top scientists achieve with their wor work, but I'm also talking about the advances that all you, all our students, are going to make by applying what you, what they have learned uh, in your own contexts. And they can only do so if universities encourage and support the students to develop a whole range of tools and skills besides the sort of teaching and providing of knowledge. We've already talked a little bit about uh, skills, but I would like to talk um, about the sort of top of my list, which I think would be critical thinking. Mm. Critical thinking is really important to challenge what is assumed to be knowledge. Um, I don't know, an example would probably be Galileo Galilei, who in the late 16th century challenged people's knowledge of the universe. You don't have to be the next Galileo, uh, but critical and analytical skills are really crucial and you should really 
be conscious uh, of developing these skills in your studies. And the second top skill for me would be empathy, because empathy is important because it help, helps us to gauge what the impact is of applying the knowledge that, we've, that we have developed. Also, these days, having knowledge of our discipline is not enough. Um, if you think about our working lives uh, and the career changes and flexible work patterns that are expected of us, uh, we have to be able to transfer knowledge and skills across professional domains. And if you are to be successful um, in today's world, you do need to develop lots of other skills, communication, technology, social and interpersonal skills, and learning how to learn and how to access information and expertise is ever more <coughs> important. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, team. Some convincing arguments and a lot of discussion. And I think, I can't remember who it was who said, actually, a lot of this is modelling things for students. And I particularly like the way that you've both completely continued to look at the question and define the terms, which is just so important. And in returning to that, I think there's been just a, a, a real sort of shift in terms of the dialogue, whilst both of you have been picking up on similar points. I'm going to just sum up each team's arguments while you two confer, and then you can come back with your final points. So Tyrrell's team of the Unseen Academics um, were starting on the position of the purpose of a university is to provide knowledge. So we've seen two very different stances at this. Is they've problematised the sentence and looked at some of the terms um, and parameters of those terms, looking at what provision is all about. And Tyrrell put forward the idea that it presents everything you need. And she also talked about the purpose of a university being a vibrant community. Now, this was something picked up by the other team. She spoke about various sorts of things in the modern age and what differentiated some of those learning materials effectively from a university provision. And she said that one of the key things was about checking your understanding. It was that assessment that differentiated things from being something on the TV um, to something else. John then spoke about knowledge and purpose, and, and his main argument was about who decides on the purpose um, of what that knowledge is all about. Um, so uh, he was looking at knowledge in itself and, and the extent to which knowledge must be trustworthy, but also this idea that it's just not the content, but the critical skills that are important to the knowledge gain. Jane then uh, continued with that argument, looking at that knowledge shouldn't be confused with just facts, and again, continuing that discussion about it changing the self. So knowledge is the shift and reflection is a very important part of that. And it's about grappling with these good ideas and the bigger questions in life. And also she concluded with the um, angle on employability. And again, if it's not just knowledge you know, is it just training? So again, the, the differentiation between a university as something that's providing something more fundamental than just the facts. That is your argument, as I've understood it. Simon, you started off focusing on four aspects, which are the mission of the Open University, a very clever idea, open to people, places, methods and ideas. And you spoke again about this community, the university being a place to meet people. Um, you also spoke about the various methods um, and the fact that a lot of those had originated at universities. Um, again, ideas and, and the OU starting on the same week as the first man walked on the moon and, and having these dreams, which were important to many students. Um, and also you spoke about the first day and the last day um, and what was important to those students then. And your whole premise of your argument is about that university is more than just that experience. But it's about nourishing ideas and bringing them back to life. Thank you. Frank, I'm taking a lot of notes, you see. Uh, Frank, you've... Uh, taking this from a linguistic perspective um, and you're looking again at the actual words going back to purpose and university um, things that are doing there for a specific reason and that there can be lots of purposes again focusing on university being a community um, and not just focused around one specific thing and multiversity so the fact that there are different things going on you had the analogy of faculties drawing together to central heating systems and you said that HE is not just about the things that we do know, it's about the things that we don't know. And that deficit in knowledge and that inquiry is something that's fundamental to a university. Regina, you um, spoke about, again, the terms, the provision and being like a service, and you argued that knowledge can't be provided in the same sense as a service can, and that transactional nature um, is not uh, comparative to, to what a university is, is concerned with. You really spoke about this common sense of truth and this engagement that students have with that. And again, tapped into this idea that we've heard before about skills, it's about the critical thinking, it's about challenging the knowledge itself, um, and also about empathy, and that, that that sort of 
take on perspective gives us a, a way of gauging impact and, and what actually matters. So we've seen two very different arguments here. I'm going to ask the team captains, first with you, Tyrrell, to, to raise your final points, please. OK, well, thank you, colleagues. It was very interesting. And, and as we saw, I don't think we're massively necessarily um, too far apart or we're maybe just different sides of the same coin. Because I think we agree with pretty much everything that Frank has said, but we can still pull that all to within the framework of a t term of knowledge. So just as Simon refers to pe being open to people, places, methods, all can be covered by learning more about people, knowing more about places, knowing more about methods, and have a greater understanding of these things. For us, being open is not enough. Opening up a door doesn't actually facilitate people to go through that and to develop themselves through those new opportunities, for example. I think Simon's points were right. Um, it's lovely to hear about his relationships that were blossoming during university. Um, it's, it's perhaps sometimes a challenge for the open university students who may be at a distance um, and are not in those sort of same spaces. But we think that learning about relationships, learning in, in any kind of relationship, is learning about oneself. It's learning about being. It's learning about becoming an adult, becoming a full person. And that's a quite a, a massively important part of um, the process of knowledge uh, sharing, building, acquiring at a university. So learning of empathy, Regini, we feel that that's about knowing others. It's about meta-knowledge, knowing how to learn, knowing how to acquire skills is as much part of critical um, developing our critical capacity, as well as learning what we don't know so we can build the gaps. Personally, as a youth worker, I don't have the issue with the problem with the notion of service. Um, and I think one example doesn't necessarily give a whole definition of the word provide, but recognising that university is an institution that creates a space that serves the people within it. All right, Terrell, I'm going to have to stop you there. Thank you very much. Simon, two minutes for your final points. Well, I think uh, Terrell's team did really well in pretending uh, that they were arguing for the motion when, in fact, they were arguing against it very <laughs> effectively. So congratulations <laughs> to them. I'd like to thank my colleagues. If I can come back to explain it with the guy behind the phrase alma mater, John Henry Newman, he failed at university, he says, um, for his last 20 weeks of revision, this is a warning to all students, he revised 12 hours a day every day, and then when he got in the exams he just couldn't think and he failed. Uh, and then he decided you better think about what a university really was, and, and he came back, and that's important to come back to show resilience. And when he wrote about universities after founding a couple, one of which failed, was to say it's not a correspondence course, it's not a convent, it's not a seminary, it's not this, it's not that, it's not a foundry, it's not a mint, he said, it's not a mill, it's an alma mater, this nourishing mother. And what he meant by that was you've got to go out and make a difference in the world. You've got to make a difference through making a difference to yourself and those around you and to your community. And if you've lived in Northern Ireland during the Troubles, you would see how fantastic it was that the universities made a contribution, including the Open University in the prisons, with many of the people who are now helping to lead that society. So I've been reminded in all this of uh, that last day issue. It, it isn't the last day. When you graduate in, in Ely Cathedral in the Barbican this last weekend, as Open University students have done, that's not the end. You take with you all these ideas, all these people, these places, these methods, and you take it out into the world, you make a difference. Thank you. Well, what an interesting discussion. That has been thoroughly interesting. So thank you very much to the teams for preparing all of this. Um, I think we can conclude that the main purpose of a university is not just to provide knowledge. I think there have been a lot of arguments put forward oh. in, term, in terms of the community. People at home are very split on the vote, however. Um, but I think both teams have raised various issues in terms of community inquiry and this idea that our alma mater is the narrow winner, um, a narrow winner, I'm, I'm told, not, not, not a clear win. Um, I'll take that. <laughs> but, but equally, um, it's this whole sense of, of, I guess, having some autonomy and some mm. sense of ownership of your own learning journey. We can't just look at a book and, and get all the knowledge from that. There needs to be some sense of interaction. I guess what we're looking at is to what extent that interaction can be taken by an individual and, and a university. And very interesting, I think, indeed, especially from your perspective, 
perspective about you know research being so important um, within the university to, to come and argue this has been very interesting from your side also Regina so so thank you I hope you've enjoyed that at home I certainly have and it's been very interesting watching colleagues model some of these discussions and again take a look at how people can unpick a sentence, unpick the terms and define their own parameters and present slightly different views on the subject. So thank you very much for that. John, we have more of you. We're now going to uh, show our audience at home a video of you because our next session is all about um, early childhood, which you're very much involved with. So join me downstairs in the studio for that next session. And thank you very much for our teams for being such <laughs> wonderful sports. And we'll do a quiz next time, I promise. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.